Look, she's right there. They're dying. There's tomatoes. We're basically in a drought, y'all. Hey y'all, Amy here and welcome back to the farm. Today I'm going to be giving you a little bit of an update on things around the farm. We're starting out here by the boys because I wanted to tell y'all something. A couple videos ago I made a video on grooming the Great Pyrenees. And y'all, I was told by several of y'all that because they're double coated, they need a different type of brush than what I was using. A couple of you, thank you so much for those who said it. And also to Sonia, who sent me a link for the rake. This is what you need for a double coated dog so that it, it, it pulls, it rakes like the, the undercoat without damaging the, the top coat, if that made sense. So anyway, thank you very much. If you have a long double coated animal uh you need a rake and if you have a regular dog the Furminator is fantastic for that but for these they need a rake so thank you i learned something new <laughs> okay um let's move on there is another animal on the farm that i want to show y'all let's go okay i came out to my girl goat area because there's a new little lady in here that I want to introduce you to. And always being in here is kind of hard because these sweethearts, <laughs> I know dear, I know. They get excited and they like to mess with the camera and now it's getting windy. Okay, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see if I can get her. Oh, she's about to walk behind me. Come here, look, she's right there. Come here. Annabelle, don't. Look at her. Okay, Annabelle, be nice. All right, y'all. We we closed Willow and Annabelle into another section because they don't like not being the one to get attention. So, I would like to introduce all of you. Stay here. Hold on a minute. Two. Two. Hold on. Hold on. It's okay. She's gonna. She's adjusting to us, y'all. This is Sarah Jane, <laughs> and that's Mabel playing with the camera. Mabel, Mabel, come here, stop for a minute. Mabel, go, go that way. Okay, all right, y'all, hold on, hold on, dear, hold on, dear, hold on, hold on, Sarah, Sarah Jane, Sarah Jane, Sarah Jane. Just a minute. Okay, all right. So this is Sarah Jane. And she came from the chicken daddy farm. She's a year and a half old. Mabel, stop it. I think that she's Annabelle's half sister. So she came from the same farm. Um, only two weeks. She's two weeks older than Annabelle. And so coming from the same farm, pretty sure they would have been running the same buck at that time. So I think she's Annabelle's half sister. Not for sure of that. But the chicken daddy farm got her from that farm. And now, Mabel, you're making this difficult. And now she's here. So this is Sarah Jane. Isn't she pretty? She's a pretty girl. She's a pretty girl. She's adjusting to life here. Thank you. Is there a little teeth? <laughs> ah, she hasn't been this hands-on with um, children. So she's adjusting to children, giving her a whole lot of attention. She got a whole lot of lovings at the chicken daddy farm, but not so much from a bunch of kids. Um, so their energy level is higher than what she's used to. Um, and it took a little bit to adjust to Willow and Annabelle because they're very dominant, but they're doing okay. They're doing okay. Everyone has adjusted. Um, one thing I did want to say, real quick is you'll notice this sweet girl is missing part of her ear y'all no matter what you do no matter what you do as hard as you try things can happen accidents can happen situations can happen and this pretty girl had a run-in with a dog 
um, not too long ago on a different farm and she's okay though she's all right accidents happen things happen as, as much as you try to keep your animals safe sometimes things happen but she's still beautiful and she's doing quite well yes she is and so Sarah Jane here is going to be having a date with Tobias next month that's the plan yes she is <laughs> we're excited about it she will be one of my milkers y'all she'll be a milker and obviously Willow's my milker and then this one right here who keeps messing with stuff come here sweetheart this one will be a milker eventually you know she's still just a baby she's just gotta be a grown-up first yes <laughs> she'll be one year old in uh uh is it april i think her birthday was in april y'all i should know this but so next april she'll be a year old and then she will probably not have a date until uh, the following late summer. Nubians are seasonal breeders. They don't come into heat year round. Um, some do like Nigerian dwarfs and smaller breeds, but other larger dairy breeds are seasonal. And so once late summer fall starts coming around is when they will start going into heat. I don't want to breed her late in the spring because that will be putting her, five months after that, will be putting her kidding when it's still very hot. And I don't want her to go through the summer pregnant and stressed with the heat. And I don't want her going into labor in the heat of the summer. Like, that's just kind of hard on them. They, they do cold much better than they do hot. So, the plan is to breed them in the late summer early fall for winter babies that's the plan but not annabelle not annabelle not mabel mabel won't be bred until the summer late summer of 2025 but um sarah jane and willow will both go in for dates with tobias in about a month okay so the next update that we're gonna do is on the garden and the sad, sad situation that we're having out here. First of all, y'all, look at this grass. My grass is brown and crunchy because we're basically, there's some shit, we're basically in a drought, y'all. Um, we haven't had rain in so long. All that rain that Florida was supposed to be getting was all south of us. And we are dry 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 dead and dry so um i've been watering things in the garden and some things just couldn't hold up to the heat um a lot of things are done already but i'm going to walk you through and show you how that's going okay we're starting out here by the peas real quick um my purple hole peas I don't, okay, y'all, they went from green to, I don't know if you can hear that, like crunchy dry, crunchy, um, real, real fast, so I know I'm wasting this one, shoot bugs, but, oh, you can't see what I'm doing, I know I'm wasting this one, but, um, these are gonna be, they're all, they're dried now, and so I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna pick them and shell them and use them as a dry bean, a dry pea. Um, because it's, it's just, I don't know, they just like went boom and they're done. So like the, there's a few that are in that middle purple stage, but most of them, as you can see, most of them, they just went from green to brown. So, okay, that's fine. <laughs> Whatever, we'll just do them that way. So this is my corn. Um, 
I'm not sure exactly what happened out here. Uh, did it no different than I ever did. Fertilized, watered regularly. Um, it just decided that it was not a good year, I guess. So, um, they're little and they're dying. So, um, the corn cobs on them are teeny tiny. Measure, they're like this big. Um, I don't know if they'll be filled out or not. Might get little bitty corns off of it, I don't know. But yeah, not a good year for corn. Just so hot and so dry. So, that's a first. That's a first. Um, we've, all, we've always done very well with corn and gotten an abund abundance of a harvest of large, wonderful Silver Queen corn, but not this year, but that's okay. You know, what do they say? You win some, you lose some. <laughs> not this year. But y'all, on a positive note, my sunflowers are fantastic. They're doing so well. I have all these out here in the big garden. And my, the little honeybees are loving them. All right, my raised bed trellises are doing well. I showed y'all my red noodle beans the last time. Can you see the yellowing of the leaves? Sorry about the sun. Um, they'll be done pretty soon, but they've got a little bit longer. Um, my green beans, they are Blue Lake pole beans. They're doing fantastic. Two trellises of those. They've still got a little bit of that leaf damage that I believe was left over from some type of herbicide issue in the soil from a mulch that I used last year, but it's not damaging the uh, harvest at all. So these are all still doing really well, getting lots of beans from those. So, hey, this year, look at those. This year I planted the teddy bear uh, sunflowers out here. They are so gorgeous. Look at that. Isn't they just so pretty? Hold on, let me turn you around so you can get a better view. I love sunflowers. And um, these are the only sunflowers that I planted from seeds that I purchased this year. All my other sunflowers are from seeds that I had saved over the years. I haven't bought sunflower seeds in a couple of years now. Um, I just keep saving the seed and they cross pollinate. So I don't ever really know what I'm gonna get when I'm planting them, but it's a whole variety of colors and things and it's all really pretty and I like them. But this year I wanted to add some of the teddy bear sunflowers and I hadn't saved any seeds. I had one teddy bear sunflower that I grew like four years ago that I didn't save seed from. And so I have these and all of them in the back. And then I've got all my zinnias. My zinnias are doing well. And over here, I have my little, um, I say um a lot y'all, sorry. Over here I have my cucumber patch. They're definitely struggling with the heat and how dry it is, but they're doing okay. I just picked yesterday, so I don't have anything big growing on it right now, but a bunch of little ones coming up in there.
I have a pepper patch that I put out on the other side of the farm, but I decided to put my jalapenos out here in my raised bed garden areas this year because it had a little bit of extra space. Originally, I planted some herbs in this box and on the other side of those cosmos over there, and they did not come up. I don't remember what herbs they were. I have parsley and thyme over there and I have basil over there. So I think it was cilantro and something else. I don't remember exactly what, but none of that came up. And so I decided to put my jalapenos here and there. I've got six plants all together. And one of the things that I love to do with jalapenos is I like to put them in the dehydrator and then I grind it into a powder with a spice grinder and put them in little spice jars. And y'all, I use that stuff on all kinds of stuff. You can add salt to it and make like a jalapeno salt or you can just use the straight jalapeno powder. And because I do it without the seeds, it doesn't have the super, super spiciness to it. It's just like a little bit of spice and all that jalapeno flavor and I love it. It's really good. Have you ever heard of a cactus zinnia? That's what these are. Well, some of these. I have some regular zinnias. That's a queen lime. But some of them are cactus zinnias. And they just have this cool, like, crazy look to them. But I think they're very unique and very cool looking. These are my tomatoes. Look! There's tomatoes! Ha! Um, I had... On the other side of the farm, I had a whole patch of tomatoes that I was growing in addition to this line of tomatoes here. And those other ones all got destroyed by like moles tunneling underneath um, and it killed all the roots and they just died. But out here in a slightly raised bed, all these tomatoes are still doing good. Um, battling tomato hornworms because doesn't everybody. Um, but other than that and some, a few weeds, they're doing great. And okay, I'm almost there in years past when I've tried to grow tomatoes, not years past, the past two years. Before that, tomatoes were no issue. The past two years, I got them to this point and then right before they were getting ready to turn, they just rot from the inside out could never figure out why um, it was just an issue and I did all the things and it didn't work but this year so far so good and I'm thinking I might get some tomatoes I'm thinking all right so over here is my little pepper patch area. Here I've got Tabasco peppers and I forget what those things are called. Um, I've got some, I believe Carolina Reapers or ghost peppers. And then one habanero. Hey, sunflower. Um, here in this one I planted this is where I have my onions. I pulled my onions and then I planted okra here. And then over here, I've got, you can see some of the beds are more well taken care of than others, depending on time. Uh, bell peppers are over here. All four of these are bell peppers. And then all four of these are cayenne peppers. And then, So over here, which is where I had my tomatoes and potatoes, the potatoes got dug, the tomatoes all died, so I decided to put some okra over here. And so far, the okra is doing very well. The last update I wanted to give y'all was going to be on bingo, which is the little bottle calf that we had here, the one that was not doing very well and went to a new home. He is doing great, y'all. He is still 
He's still struggling just a little bit with like his muscle tone and things. Um, he's on some supplements for that. He's not as steady on his feet as he should be, but he is doing a lot better. No more scours, um, no more fevers or issues like that. And he has a little friend. He's got a little Holstein calf named Winnie, who is his best friend now. And I just wanted to let y'all know, for those who are wondering, that Bingo is doing very well. All right, y'all, thanks for hanging out with me this evening while we went over all the updates on stuff here. I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, keep on the sunny side.